So yeah, what is the latest on Barnard's oh, star? Oh my, yeah, folks, is, so you all understand what in the world it is that a space artist does. Scientific data it is the real gold standard, scientific data acquired by researchers. But sometimes what it'll get you is, well, like you were just seeing there, something, a diagram, something like that. But the public, you and me being curious folks, we clamor to see what something would be like. So artists will interpret and imagine. We already saw another nice piece of art there. Uh, and that, that's what I do. We've had something happen here that's a good case in point for you folks who may be consumers of astronomical art and also for folks like me who do that. Uh, something that's important to remember, we're a data-driven hobby and profession. And well, sometimes we do get a little bit ahead of ourselves. And I have a classic example of that, something from my life over uh, many years. The, uh, the scene you're looking at there is something that I did uh, actually a number of years ago of a planet around a star called Barnard Star, a frozen icy surface with a thick atmosphere and this distant orange sun hanging in this spooky, mysterious sky over the ice. Um, this is a world I've seen. This is a world I, well, I believed in, I, I'd invested in it artistically. And for somebody in the average public looking at this, you'd look at a scene like this and say, well, I know all about it. I've seen it, right? A picture, a picture is worth a thousand words and sometimes it shouldn't be. In this particular case, I would have to revise this drawing dramatically because of some new discoveries that have just been made. Let's start out with Barnard's star, just for a moment. It's a famous star. Uh, the gentleman in the picture, Dr. Emerson Barnard, is the man it's named for. It was famous not because it's bright. The picture you're seeing is a zoomed in telescopic photograph. As a matter of fact, it's a very faint star. You can't see it with the, uh, the unaided eye at all. He proved uh, in 1916 that this star was actually very, very close to us. It was a surprise, a discovery of a new star close to us. So it was well known. If you look at diagrams today, you'll see that uh, with the sun there in the center, those are not orbits of planets. Those are rings of distance. You have at just about four light years, you've got the bright yellow dot there of Alpha Centauri. Uh, right next to it is the other closest star, uh, Proxima Centauri, that's your red dot. Uh, those remain the closest star systems we know of to our own, like 4.2, 4.3 light years away. But Barnard's star, marked with the red arrow on the other side, is at six light years. So this was a surprising thing to find one so close, and it remains the second closest star system to our own. People have always wondered if it had planets. And guess what? The announcement came in the year before I was born, 1963, that Dr. Peter Van de Kamp, a Dutch astronomer working in the United States, had painstakingly watched Barnard's star and detected that it was wobbling slightly. Now, what would do this? The, the gravity of a planet going around it could displace the star slightly. Now, we use those techniques a lot today, but I wanna be clear with this. This is the old school way of doing it called astrometry, which means star measuring. And he's literally looking at photographs of the star through a telescope. And of course, it's not a tiny, tiny little pinpoint. They make it as small as they can, but it's just kind of a blob. And he's looking to see a tiny wobble around the edges. Very, very hard to do. But he thought he found uh, a wobble. And he announced that he had found a planet around another star, a planet about the size of, say, Saturn, something like that. Now, the thing that's interesting about this, there had been no announcements, no formal announcements of somebody saying they'd found a world around another star. In 1963, we didn't know of any. <laughs> this was an example where somebody said, yeah, I got it. And it's around Barnard's star, that famous star, right down the freeway, six light years away. Everyone was really excited about this, but there was a problem. Other scientists looking for this, well, uh-oh, here's a scholarly paper. This is 1973, and skepticism was building. People could not find the wobble. 
So those worlds that, well, you asked me as a kid back then, I would have known all about those planets. I could have told you all about them. And now it looked like they might not be there. That's a little disappointing, but that isn't what science is about, is the question of fulfilling your wishes. The question was what's really there, right? And it looked like they weren't there. So all of us who are early adopters of the Van de Kamp planets, we had to let them go, okay? So those giant planets, whatever they were, they just weren't there. So, okay, fair enough. Time goes on. Barnard Star has no planets. And then in 2018, suddenly, big news, headlines, lots of headlines. I quoted the headlines here for you folks so you can get an idea of the pent up frustration and excitement people were feeling about this. At last, a planet for Barnard Star. People have been staring at it, testing, trying to find something. Look at the second headline, Barnard Star, the great white whale of planet hunting, all right? This is one we were waiting for. People ran off ahead of themselves asking though, it, it looked like it would be very, very cold, but somebody's even speculating that maybe it could be a home for life. The, the fact is people got excited about this. This was not a big giant planet like Jupiter or Saturn, this was, well, like we were just talking about, a super Earth, a slightly larger than Earth planet. It was in a place where it would be very, very cold, but it might have a solid surface. Here's an example of an artist's rendering. This is from the European Southern Observatory, not one of mine. And uh, here, we're just letting our imagination go to town because we didn't know very much. And I want to make the point to the astronomers who uh, reported this, they were cautious. They said, look, this signal is barely there. This is right on the edge of what we can do. Other people need to look at this. Well, other people did. That's what science does. So they looked at it and, oh boy, guess what? Other astronomers looking at the, the signal very close. Yeah, the data is there, but the problem is they failed to account for something. It has to do with the star's rotation. It was some something the original discoverers knew could potentially be a problem, but it turns out the planet just doesn't seem to be there. So what, what does all this mean? What does it mean for you guys? Well, I mean, I'm allowed to feel a little bit like Charlie Brown with the football, when Lucy pulls the football back. I mean, in 1973, I thought I had a planet. And it turns out it's not there. And in 2018, I jumped up and down. I said, ah, that's good. I like that planet. It turns out it may not be there. Notice, by the way, it's the scientists, the astronomers, who are checking each other's work. And if there's a problem with it, they say so. And that's okay. For guys like me, well, you know, initially there was nothing. We didn't know if there was anything around Barnard's star. Um, today, uh, then we had the, uh, the 1973 planets, whatever it was, they might've been those big gas planets. Maybe they had rings, maybe they had moons, all of these ideas that I got so excited about, but the data in the end showed probably not there. So we had to revise our ideas the astronomers and also the artists. So in 2018, not those giant planets, a smaller planet, more like the earth, with perhaps an icy surface under a relatively thick atmosphere, maybe possibility of water under an icy crust. We all got kind of you know, excited about that possibility. And it's true for all the exoplanet discoveries. All of them have to be checked. Some of them are more definite than others. This was, always on the edge. I'm glad that we found out that this world that I imagined isn't there because this means we are hunting. We're going to find the data. We'll find out what is there. And it's gonna be exciting for all of us, not just the general public and not just for the astronomers, but also for artists. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you folks uh, today. And uh, we will see what happens with Barnard Star. Yeah, well, thank you, Chris. Like you said, you can't get upset. Well, some folks can, I see and would understand, but, but science and the data are doing what they do. This yeah. is how we can trust 
science will eventually come on the right answer. Our answers get better and better as we improve what we believe in based upon our observations.